So the question is still concerning the Baptists. Baptists. Now we still, uh, uh, maybe we'll call this the Whitney Houston um, murder investigation and the aftermath. Like we said, we, we wasn't big fans of Whitney. We didn't, you know, harbor no, no ill will towards her or her family or her husband or her daughter, anybody. You understand? But something about this particular, this whole incident, you know, it's, it's like um, one say, it's a teachable moment. You know, this, this is a teachable moment. This is one of the reasons why, if you looked at some of the recent uploads, we are touching on this, not to get into a whole bunch of gossip, 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 but to proclaim the good news. You understand? If there's any gossip that we're gossip about, it's the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. And then if one say we gossip about that, yes, we admit, you understand, we are innocent. You know, you know? <laughs> we're not guilty for that, you understand, because there's no, there's no need. It takes away a lot of the guilt. And this is why there's still so many lost black niggas who are still part of Jerusalem. See, Jerusalem is John's sole people. Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem was that, was that city. You understand? Know Notice something. Why did he say soul music? Any tune that's, that, that's worth its, um, its salt, mm -hmm. that's worth its weight in salt, that means it has flavor, you know, that has, that has as Christ says, a savor to it, you know, that has, a, has, has taste to it, has, 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 has a, you know, like, like um, salt in two ways. It flavors food. It preserves food, and then also wounds. You can put salt in there, and it basically acts in a way like an antibiotic. Or they call it sodium. You know, they use these sodium solutions in, or saline in the hospital. They use a saline solution. So you can put all that together right there. Christ said salt, but he said for us to search out these things and to study and show ourselves approved. So when we do, we can see the, um, the physical the, the, the spiritual and psychological connection. So Jerusalem, we start out with Ezekiel 1644 because it says, as, as the mother, so the daughter. You know, so is the daughter. Or as the mother, the daughter. You know, now they are trying to line Bobby Christina up there. We didn't want to put a video, though, when we put up, like, the first set of videos, or the first video. So we saw that. We discussed that as well with some of I and I, confidences, you know, and confidant, you know, concerning these things and, and certain ones and ones that we reasoned with, we kind of addressed it and talked about it a little bit, but we don't want to put out a video on it as to kind of like target her, you understand? So far, it seemed like she was just, you know, keeping her head down and, and she was out of the news, but right, I think right after the funeral, they, they, they ran a story. That, that, that she did drugs of some sort. They didn't say what, but we know how they, how they lie and deceive. You understand? Um, but be that as it may, we're, 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 where we're at right now, we want to continue with this Baptist point. Now, while we point to the Baptist, we broke down um, Bobby Christina's name Ethiopically. Ethiopically, the, the Targum would be, would be wisdom, anointing wisdom or wisdom of the Spirit, Wisdom of anointing, you understand? Wisdom of Christ, you understand? Wisdom of Christ. Now, the Christ in the English, in the Hebrew is Moshiach, is Moshiach, you understand? Or Messiah. Now, there's a link and connection with the African Israelites, the, the, the African Israelite community, because no doubt you should already know and probably seen some of the vids that we posted at, at our YouTube site um, concerning um, their visit in 2003 and how the satanically charged and powered and influenced media sought to mock it, you understand, and speak of it derisively. You know, in other words, the so-called Jebu Jews mocking the true Israelites. But that's why Revelation chapter 2 and 9 and, and chapter 3 and 9 speaks the way that it does concerning those who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Remember what Christ, our master, says. We judge them by their fruits, not by their so-called 
race or lack thereof or whatever, you know, their their complexion or because they're so called white, because there are many true ones out there also who are breaking camp you know, with that so called false Zionism because they're learning that the true Zionism is, is an African reality and is rooted and grounded in the King of Kings and his Christ. So shalom to the Rastafari uh, Kibbutzniks and, and, and others. We'll touch on that as we move forward, y'all willing. But let's deal with Baptist point because we put this on the same level as Christianity. And we asked the question, we posited it with the question, are Baptists Christian? Now, some of y'all, if y'all are Baptists or grew up in a Baptist church, so forth and so on, listen, we didn't grow up in a Baptist church, so we just want to put, put that dis disclaimer. So one who, who might say that, oh, the reason why we say it, we didn't grow up in a Baptist. If you grew up in a Baptist church, you know how good it was, and, and you like this and that. We are judging it by Christ's word. Because he says that he's not the one, he's not judging, but his, his word judges. But the word that he has delivered to us is the will of his Father. So if you don't want to be caught doing the devil's will or Satan's will, as Second Timothy um, chapter 2, verse 26 says, if you want to recover yourselves out of that sneer or that trap, you understand, who are taken captive by Satan, by the devils to do their will, you have to come to repentance. You have to come to repentance, you have to have a change of mind, and you have to acknowledge the truth. And in verse 25 of 2 Timothy chapter 2, that is made abundantly clear. But we thought it necessary to focus a little bit more on this Baptist issue. Uh -huh. And to ask whether Baptists are Christian. You know, you hear a lot of stuff when you say that uh, um, um, Mitt Mommy. Mitt Romney or Mitt Romney, Mitt, Mitt, Mitt Roman, whatever his name is, that that guy, he's a Mormon, right? Mitt Romney, that he's a Mormon. And a lot of people, oh, Mormon, such and such and such. You know, there are some truer things in the Mormon teaching than the Southern Baptist teaching. I mean, if you were to approach it, you understand, asking that the Spirit of God guide you and you don't go there with preconceived or go to the, their teaching or whatnot with certain preconceived notions. Yes, there's some things in it which are a little bit far, far-fetched, you understand, but because they're far-fetched doesn't mean in principle they're not necessarily true. The major fault of, of Mormonism is the whitewashing. That's the, that, that's the major fault of it. Remember... Um, Moses, Moses put his hand in his breast and, and he took it out and it turned leprous, white as snow. Then he put his hand back in his bosom and he took it out and it returned to his other flesh. That was a sign. That was a sign that it began off black. You understand? Then there would be another people or other people or a change of the people. You understand? Before things returned as they were in the beginning. But Baptists, it's interesting that, that you have such a thing called a Baptist church. Now, if I am correct, um, Whitney Houston, she grew up in a Baptist church. Something interesting I found out, that her, her father was not, how do you want to say it, not black or not fully black. He was part Italian, as well as he wanted, he put a hit out. It's alleged that he put a hit out on um on, on Bobby Brown because he didn't like Bobby Brown. And, you know, we black folks who, who still have a soul in us, you know, that means we know where we came from. We, we you know, we, we, we know our people or, you know, we know niggas, in other words. We, we recognize why he most likely did not like Bobby Brown because Bobby Brown, he felt, was beneath his daughter's middle class um, inclinations. You understand? And we get into the light skin, dark skin thing too, as well. And all of these are are fruits or byproducts of this right here. These are all byproducts of let's make a slave. 
These are all byproducts of slick woolly, slick woolly lynch white supremacyism. Right? So um, her mother, she's a Grammy award winning uh, gospel singer. Well, she sung backup for Elvis. Elvis, the same cracker who said that the only thing that a black man can do for me is shine my shoes. Now, some now say that he really didn't say that. He liked the black people. Well, yeah, he, he liked the black people who knew their place, no doubt about it. You know what I mean? Because he's from that world, from that conditioning, so forth and so on. And nothing that you can really show in his life really changes that. They might find somebody now, some old Negro, whose social security was cut off, so they'll pay him off to say, say, oh, um, say that, that Elvis, you remember how he helped you out. He loved black people, you know. And that, that, that's, that's, the kind of, that's the kind of deception. Remember, they have a whole bunch of these, these, these lost sheep who they've taken captive. You understand? Who they're taking captive. So they don't really have the free will, you understand, to do God's will. First, they must recognize their situation. You understand? Then they must ask for repentance, you understand, and come to the knowledge of the truth, and then act knowledge, act on that knowledge of the truth before they are even in, in, in the race for the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ, before they come out of the sneer. You know, that's the process that we learn right here. And this is also a word for Bobby Christina, and not just for her, but also a lot of you all. You understand? Because many of us had to go through the same process too. You understand? It took us a while because we didn't have really anyone to really show us these things. You know, we had to kind of study and pray and study and pray. You, you know what I mean? And, and, and study more and, and find it. You understand? And this is one reason why in our ministry we find that it's so important to share these things. So, yes, we're still on the, the, the Whitney Houston issue because it's a teachable moment. It's a very important teachable moment, you know, and, and it says to um, strike, you know, while the, while the iron is hot, you know, to hit it while the, the point is still fresh in our minds, you understand? And this reality is still the present reality instead of allowing it to become another, another psychic wound. You see, because black people are psychically, psychically wounded by this. You know what I mean? I mean, we, we are. We are. Uh, even folks that feel that she sold her soul, and we think that she did sell her soul. You know, she tried to get out of it. You know, um, the first bad move, you understand, was the, the, the breakdown in their relationship. You understand, between Bobby and, and Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston. That's what the devils wanted. So whenever you hear now um, Bobby Brown's name being mentioned, you know, as far as his daughter, you always see Satan's accomplices jump up and say, no, he shouldn't be there because he's, what? we even heard one person say that, well, he wouldn't be bad in, 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 in his daughter's life provided that he stays clean. Right, and, and that's the point that he stays off all that crazy stuff that he was, he, him and his wife were on, his late wife was on, um, late ex-wife was on, and that he stays employed. I said, I said, whoa. I said, Bobby Brown. I don't know how much money he spent on all that drugs and stuff like that and other stuff, you know, the other dissolution. You know, instead of dealing with the solution, because they went to Israel and they met with those, those African Hebrews, our Hebrew Israelite brothers in Israel, African Hebrew brothers, the Ben Ami community. So they found the solution, but instead they were drawn, you understand, to the dissolution, the dissolution of, you know, these bad habits that, that many of us have been born into. And remember what COINTELPRO was about. You can't forget the COINTELPRO. So we have a lot of COINTELPRO incidences, you're saying, or COINTELPRO incidences that basically show that, yes, a lot of us as black people and a lot of black people have um, made bad and wrong decisions. You understand? Yet we also have to recognize the context of this, that, that the, the system, the so-called matrix, 
You understand? Is also a part of this. So both black people have to recognize to make better God-directed and, and job-orientated decisions and also be conscious of the big picture, of the big picture. See, they try to make us think we live in a post-racial America and all those racial issues are long, 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 long time ago. We should even talk about slavery or any of that. That's, 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 that's an old relic of the past. It's not. You see what I'm saying? But they know that if they can remove this, then they can keep wounding us to take us further and further into a spiritual captivity and, if possible, to take the lost souls with them into Gehenna. In other words, the lost souls with them into what, 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 what generations of humans call hell or into the fire. You see what I'm saying? Some false teachers out there say that nobody's going to hell, only the angels. They show you one verse in Revelation. They don't show you the other verse, you understand, which shows that the men and the people, you understand, when it's about the devil, Satan, and his angels, if you are communicating the devil's message, you know, you, you're like putting out the devil's message and, and not opposing the devil's message, you understand, or not illuminating shining light and exposing, you understand, what the devil's message is, and you are a messenger for the devil. You see what I'm saying? Therefore, you are one of his angels. See, some people think it's only the fallen angels, so forth and so on. No. There are angels in heaven, and there are angels on earth, and there are angels in other dimensions, but that doesn't really concern us. Let's deal with heaven and earth right now, all right? Now, the point about the Baptist is interesting because when we listen to that preacher, what are the whining, the whine, whine, whiny, whine, whine, whining preacher? When we, when we, when we listen to him um, speak, huh, he was trying to go against the prosperity, the, the people who are shining light on the false gospel, the false prosperity only gospel. See, it's not prosperity that that is 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 it's not prosperity that's wrong. It's doing one thing, choosing one thing out of the word of God to the exclusion of everything else that the church that the church is supposed to do and that the church is supposed to be about. In fact, we might upload uh, this video from Another, another brother on the YouTube's his site and give some references to it. But this, this one part of how, 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 how they broke that down, you understand? We could have gone a little bit more deeper into it, but still at a basic level, it was shining light on the folly, you understand, on, on the counterfeit doctrine, you understand, of many of these churches. Now, why do you think niggers are Baptists? Why, why do you think Negroes, a lot of Negro churches are Baptists, especially down in the South, or in the former slave states. Why do you think they're Baptists? Simply because Massa, not the Messiah, but Massa was Baptist. Now remember what we said about John. John, of those born of woman, there is none greater. Right? But the least in the kingdom. Notice what Christ, Christ was distinguishing two different realities. He was distinguishing the temporal reality, those born of woman, of, of natural birth, and those born of spiritual birth, that one who's born of spiritual birth, even the least, even the neusa Christian, even the catechumen, even the novice or neophyte, is greater than John. Why? Very simply. Let's go there, Let's go there one more time, because this, this is the crowning scripture, you understand, on this. This gives us the authorization to deal with this right here in uh, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Now, the, the footnote down here says, positionally greater, not morally. Positionally greater, positionally greater, not morally. It's not talking that John was, was particularly bad in his morals. No, he was very, he was very strict. You could say, you know, maybe super, he was like a super ascetic, you understand? A super monk in his morals, you understand? We wouldn't look at a woman with lust, 
We, you know, don't lie, don't steal. You understand? I mean, he was he, he was a moral person, but he was offended in the Messiah. Why? Why? A lot of folks don't study this. They gloss over chapter 11. And in chapter 11, we have this, that, and it came to pass when Joshua, Jesus, had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples. He departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. So he's commanding, giving them orders. Not saying, would you like to do such and such? No, do you do this, you go here, and you go with him, so forth and so on, boom, right? And then he departed thence from there, thence from there, to teach and to preach. Now, I've often asked this question to myself, firstly and foremostly, and it took me a while to really distinguish it. Not a while, but, you know, I had to meditate on this and do a little study and research. What's the difference between teaching and preaching? Hmm? What's the difference between teaching and preaching? You see, teach, preach, they kind of rhyme and everything. So you can use them interchangeably. But it's the mind. What's the difference between teaching and preaching? You see, teaching is like when we are going through the lesson in, 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 in exhaustive detail, you understand, or in much detail. Preaching is when we're proclaiming the virtues of the kingdom, you understand, proclaiming, you know, proclaiming one's, hey, before it's too late, you know, as much the king of kings in his Christ, you know, preaching is proclamation of the good news of the gospel. Teaching now is the instruction, you understand? So, so the preaching really is what goes first, you see what I'm saying, to ones who are without, who are empty of this truth. You preach, you proclaim to them, you understand? Like, like his majesty, Hala Selassie, is the king of kings. He's the king of kings. He's the lion of Judah, period. You, you might not like him. You might think, well, why Ethiopia? Maybe you don't like the fact that he's a man short of stature, you understand, but not of, of, of spiritual, of soul stature, but of physical stature. So ones may look down on that, or they may look at Ethiopia and say, well, Ethiopians, they don't think they're niggers or Negroes. Well, in a sense, they are not, because they have not lost that, that national identity like the lost sheep have, like we have. So why should they be something that they're not? Albeit, now that they're fellowshipping here in America, Atlanta, other places, they're learning nigger ways. You know what I mean? So I guess that's so that all and all be full. You understand? But preaching was for those who needed to be persuaded of this truth. You understand? Preaching is proclamation. It's like testifying but proclaiming to them, you, you know, proclaiming to them, the, 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 the word of the kingdom, you know, like repent, the kingdom of God is here, you understand, look to Ethiopia for the crowning of a black man, and so a black man will be crowned king, in him you will find the redeemer, in him we have found the redeemer, that is preaching, that is proclaiming, so they go together, it's not like, okay, we're preaching now, and preaching, okay, start teaching, no, they do overlap, but they are like two sides of one sword, of one sword. For example, with the Pharisees, the Pharisees didn't really need to get so-called always preached to, but they thought they knew things and they had to be taught. Some of the, some of the, the, the Pharisees like uh, Nicodemus and John, uh, 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 Joseph of Arimath Arimathea, they were his, what they call the secret disciples. Yes, and they would come to him at night, and, and there were others, you know, there was many more besides the 12. The 12 were like the, 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 the chairman of the board, you know what I'm saying? But there were others that Christ had um, fellowship with and others that were his disciples and others that, that he taught and he preached to. So here now John the Baptist sends disciples to question uh, Joshua. Now when John had heard, 
in the prison the works of Christ, the works of the Messiah, the Moshiach. He sent two of his disciples. So we see the disciples working in a two-by-two, two, in a two-by-two. Two. And in our discipleship, it's, it's difficult now because we're scattered all over the place and, and perhaps in the area that you might be in, there might not be anyone else to really maybe partner with in that same two-by-two. Two. But still, it is a good principle to, to pray for and, and to be patient for and, 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 to, and to be able to um, recognize when the Almighty has sent you a, a, a disciple who's meet to, to study. It could, be, it could be your husband, you, you know, your kingman. It could be your wife. You understand? It could be a parent and child. It could be the two best sisters, two best brethren. You know, um, it could be in different orders, but the main focus is the Moshiach. The main focus is, is Jah and Joshua. But he had heard, John had heard in the prison the works of the Moshiach, the, the Mashiach. He sent two of his disciples, and he said to him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? That's deep. That's like folks that try to dismiss his majesty, that try to dismiss the significant. I'm talking about black folks. I'm talking about niggas. I'm talking about lost sheep, you understand, who want to dismiss his majesty. They say, yeah, well, he was, he was all right, but uh, he, couldn't, he couldn't be uh, uh, Christ or Christ in his kingdom character or, 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 or Jesus. And we never say he was Jesus. We say he's Christ in his kingly character. You understand? He, he, is, he, he is Christ in his kingly character. We'll explain that a little more in detail. But the point is the question they ask, that, that the disciples ask on behalf of John the Baptist, art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? So this indicates what? What does this indicate concerning John the Baptist? Baruch Hu, blessed be he, uh, Baruch Hashem. He doubted. He doubted. Mm -hmm. The Baptist doubted. The Baptist doubted. Now, this has nothing to do with baptism in the sense of baptism as a right, as in a sense of ordinance and, and, and as a right. Uh -huh. of Christ's man passage. Nothing to do with, with that. Because remember, even John himself said that, you know, I baptize with water. The one who coming after me, he baptized with, um, with uh, spirit and fire. He baptized with spirit and fire. Now, Jeremiah says, in his book, Jeremiah says that, that, that Adonai, O oh Lord, your word is like a, 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 a fire. Your word, that, 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 that the word is a fire. You see, but let, let's break down some basic uh, science, basic, basic material world science. Fire needs what element? What element does fire need? Besides the spark, the friction, what element does fire need? Fire needs air. It needs spirit. It needs a, a spiritus. It needs a spiritus in order for it to, 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 to um, bulk below. You understand? In order for it to, to flame up. It, it needs air. You understand? This is what firemen learn this too, that they, 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 if they can trap off air from something, you know, that's why they say like in a fire, you know, um, don't leave open doors or whatnot like that. Try to limit the amount of air. Mm-hmm. The amount of air, because once there's air, then this thing goes forward. So spirit first, and then fire. And then we see when we study the scriptures carefully, we see that Christ walked into a closed room, right? A room that was the resurrected Christ. Yet to Nassau, Jesus. You understand? He walked into a, 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 a closed room with the disciples, right? And he breathes on them, right? He breathes on them, and he says, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. And he breathes on them, right? Then, in Acts of the Apostles, 
they still were concerned with the redemption. The disciples still concerned with the redemption of Israel. Like many of us, we're concerned with setting up the kingdom, Chad kingdom, I and I rule. You understand? We're concerned with that, the same issue they were. And Christ said, don't, 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 don't worry about that. Don't really business with that right now. What you need to do is to get your spirit, get your heart and your mind in order. He didn't say heart and mind, but he said, first pray and receive the Holy Spirit. You understand? You need the Holy Spirit. And then the Bible also explains that he spent time with them, teaching them from, from, from Moses' law, from the Psalms of David, and, and from the prophets, the things concerning he himself, concerning Rasu, concerning himself, his Ras, the head, himself. Right? So we see their spirit. He focused on spirit. He said, he said, pray in the upper room, you understand, until the Holy Spirit be come upon you. You understand? Until the Holy Spirit be come upon you. And notice the Ethiopian eunuch in chapter 8 of Acts of the Apostles. He was on the Gaza, the, the Gaza Strip. He was on the Gaza Strip, right? He was on the, the, the Gaza Road, right? Returning to Ethiopia, to Ethiopia right? And um, he's a Hebrew as well. So that means he's Beta Israel. He's one of us, no doubt. A connection with 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 um with the the princes that went to Ethiopia with Solomon and Sheba's only son, Menelik or Kedemawi Menelik. And what was he doing? He was reading. He was reading, right? He was reading, but he he didn't get baptized. The, what he needed now was baptism. So you know that old saying that says that um, when the disciple or the student is ready, the teacher will appear, in other words? So Philippos or Philip was that appointed teacher. He was that appointed te that vessel. Because remember, Philip was, Philip was doing something, and the Holy Spirit said, go run and meet this chariot. And Philip, man, Philip must have been, Philip must have had some Ethiopian or African in him too because, you know, Africans, they, they, they do that running. And, you know, and we as black folks, too, too you know, that athletic spirit to, to run and to catch up with a chariot. And probably he could have maybe outrun the chariot, too, and reach Ethiopia before. But the spirit said, go catch up, join yourself to that chariot, join yourself to that particular chariot. So he saw that this Ethiopian Hebrew, this fellow Hebrew, that, but from Ethiopia, from a different nationality, because remember that the that the Israelites, just like us black folks, we'd be like, we African-American, we're Judah. Forget everybody else. You know, or others might say that Rastafari are only Jamaicans. Forget everybody else. You, you know, there's that, there's that tendency to be myopic and to be ignorant. You know what I'm saying? That's not John's will, but that's the people's will. That's, that's what they call uh, nationalism or, or, or ethnic pride or even leads to tribalism or gang warfare, you understand, that leads to bloods and crips and, and to different divisions of one people, of one people. Divide, diabolin, diablos, divide and what conquer. That's what divides and conquers them. So the spirit and the, the, the fire is what's very, very important. So, hmm, you notice something right here? That water baptism... Right? is necessary. So John did something necessary to fulfill all what? To fulfill all righteousness. Because when John saw Joshua, Yehoshua, he said, uh, he said, no, I, I, I need to be baptized by you. You understand? And Christ says, just, you know, do this to fulfill all, all righteousness. You understand? Because it is, it is what John requires, what the word of God requires. There's an order. There's an order. And you are the one, you understand? You are the one to do this for me. You, you know what I mean? It's just like with um, the high priest, even the king of kings. The king, someone else had to anoint the king of kings. Someone else had to set the crown on the head of the king of kings, was appointed for that role, even though the one who he's putting the crown on his head is higher and will be higher positionally, than the one who is doing the service, you understand, or the right of, 
of ordination. You, you understand? And, and the one who does the rite of ordination is the, is the kahin, is the kahin. And the kahin comes from, from, from kone or hone to make something happen, or, or in the Arabic kun, kun, fire, kun, you understand, to make it be, to make it result. You understand? So by doing this, the, the priests are the ones who are invested, you understand, with that spiritual and temporal link responsibility, you understand, in order to do that, to bring up or bring in, bring in the order or one into that service. So anointing has to do with a particular service. You see, that anointing part has to do with a, with a particular service right here. So now, more on John is what Joshua answered and said to them. He says, go and shoo John again. In other words, go and show John again. Because John had heard. He didn't say, go and, um, go and, and let him hear, hear about my works again. No, he said, go and shoo him. Go and show him. Show him this. Show again those things which you do here and see. Because remember, John only heard this, but he didn't really see it because he was in jail. He was, he was locked, locked up. You understand? He was locked up. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. And the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. That's what's very interesting right there. It's the poor that have the gospel preached to them, not just of physical world prosperity, not just of temporal prosperity, you understand, but of triune prosperity, prosperity in spirit, prosperity in soul, prosperity physically, in body, in health, so forth and so on. Where a lot of these churches go counterfeit is because of the love of money. This, 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 this so-called Baptist Whitney Winan Baptist preacher, he said something to the effect that, um, like, the church ain't, this church ain't no place for poor people. Like, what? <laughs> you, you know, speechless. The only thing we can say is, can you tell you guess this is it? In, in other words, may, may the Lord rebuke you. May you be rebuked, because you're trying to take the body of Moses away from the people. What's the body of Moses? It's Torah. The body of Moses is Torah, trying to take the Torah away from the people. Why? Because death reigned from Adam to Moses. What? How could, wait, if death reigned from Adam to Moses, this is what the Bible, the Bible teaches, death reigned from from Adam, okay, the tree incident and the Eve incident, the serpent incident, right, all one incident, you know, um, they all were guilty for in different degrees, but they all were guilty, you understand? And so death was appointed, you understand? And he didn't live out his day. Adam didn't live a thousand years. Uh, you know, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. He was, he was 900 and change, you understand? But, but he fell just short of that one day of a thousand years. So death came into the world, right? Because in the beginning, man, or Zakar when Ebal, or when did not say it, the male and the female in Genesis chapter 1, they were made in the image and after the likeness of Ha Elohim. So therefore, Ha Elohim dieth not. No, no provision for death or the dead came in at that time. After Adam, you understand, the Afar, the one from the Afar in Genesis chapter 2, this is where death comes in. But then the Bible teaches and says that death reigned. The key word is reigned. Now, the word reign doesn't mean that death was around. You know, reign doesn't mean that that was on the block, you know, or was in the neighborhood. No, reign means to rule as king. To rule as king. So death reigned, the Bible teaches, from Adam, right, from Adam to Moses. Now, I just want to find that you could, uh, uh, forgive me, some of y'all might know this verse. You understand, but I got a lot I want to share with you and give thanks. We have 
we have these things here um, to uh, to use as reference to to sharpen to sharpen our our swords. Romans five and fourteen. Romans five and fourteen. Right. Romans five and fourteen. Um, let's just put it right here. Romans five and fourteen, and put a little star right there. Romans five and fourteen. And let's get the verse for a moment. So I want you to get the verse, and then you can study the scripture, the the fuller context of it. You understand? We don't want to send you with just just one verse. You understand? And 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 just go with our ideas, but focus on what we both can learn. Some things we already know, but we we always look forward to learning. Here is speaking of through death, through Adam, sin and death. It says from from verse twelve. 12 to 14, wherefore, as by one man sin, chatiyat, missing the mark, entered into the world, and death by sin, by chatiyat. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin, chatiyat, was in the world. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin, chatiyat, is not imputed where there is no law. In other words, sin is not imputed, right? Sin is not imputed where there is no law. So if there is no law, there is no imputation of sin. Now, what does this mean? What does this mean that there is no imputation of, there's no imputation of sin? Let's get the Amharic, the Metzhaf, Kedus, side by side right here. And, and this is still about the Baptist church. You understand? Because, remember, John lost his head. He lost his head. And, 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 and true, somebody else cut off his head. But even the predicament, in a sense, that he got into was part of his being overly self-righteous and moralistic. You understand? Once Christ had come, you understand? Something like, John, something like uh, Marcus Garvey. He should have followed the one that he had proclaimed. You, you, know, you, you know, it's like me saying, is Matthew the king of kings? And then I'm saying, no, I'm the king of kings. You know, or it, it, it's crazy. You, that's like, you know, you lose your head, you lose your mind, you go crazy. You can, it can be actual or symbolic, but both of them end up with the same result. And what's the result? The result is, 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 is the reign of death. Let's just connect this verse 14, then we go to the footnote and deal with that imputation point. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So death reigned over all, even those who had not done, in other words, um, the, the same type of disobedience that Adam, that their ancestor had done, who is the figure who is the figure of him that was to come. So he is the figure, he's a likeness of the one who is to come after, who is to come after. Now, there's a footnote right over here. There's actually uh, a three-part footnote right here. Uh, the first sin, now sin is khatiyat. Khatiyat, matat, means to lack. In the 23rd Psalm, it says, that the sustainer is my shepherd. I will not, there's nothing that causes me. There's not, nothing or no one which causes me to lack or to miss something. You know, and that is interesting because we have learned that where the tricks of the enemy, the, the, this whole seduction and selling of souls business goes down, is where people, when people feel some sort of a lack, you know, people feel, and, and see, they may feel this sort of a lack, but usually it has, it's a product of this sinful world. You know, those people who feel they're not beautiful enough because they were always told that they look like this, or they was always told that, you know, they, 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 there'll never be nothing. You know, in and, and the black community, there's a lot of that. Always told that you ain't no good. 
You know, like one has a light-skinned child, a dark-skinned child. The dark-skinned child is going to be told that they lack what the so-called light-skinned child has. And now niggas are doing it monetarily. You understand? Or if one is more of a, 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 a slave, a captive, and they get paid more so-called money than the other one, the other one now gets a lack. So a lot of these, these social psychotic um, behaviors, you understand, are not what the Almighty created, but is a part of man-made society, is a part of what man, and, and, and this is interesting, none of this is written on the trees or the rocks or, or anywhere, but somehow it's in man's heart and mind, and it gets to be passed on from generation to generation. Now, when it gets passed on from generation to generation, this brings us back to the, the, the point, bam, right here, it becomes a generational curse. You see what I'm saying? It becomes a generational curse. And when we look at um, the law, or what's called the law, which is the, which is the, the so-called Ten Commands, but more correctly, it is the Ten Words forming one command, it says something very interesting in verse 5, Exodus 20 and 5. Got rightly divided the word, coming back, come, going forward to Romans just now. It says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, to these idols, to, to these idols of, 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 of wood or stone or, or, you know, even celebrity. Celebrity today and fame today is like the idol. It's like the big idol. You know, like the Oscars. Ain't that something? All these people um, foaming, foaming at the mouth and, and, and chomping at the, at the bit, you understand, to get an Oscar. But an Oscar is an idol. And then they want to talk, you know, I mean, it, it is crazy, right? And thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. You see, you hear some of these people say, I will do anything to get an Oscar, anything. Remember when the child molestation accusations against Michael Jackson was circulating. There were some comedians that said that they would, they would sleep or have sex or, or uh, be, I guess they were males, homosexually, you know, um, sexed, if you call it that, you know, abominated, you know, um, by Michael Jackson to get some of that money. You know, and, and uh, are these people mad? Yes, they are mad. You understand? But they're suffering something that's called, in biblical science, um, uh, generational curse or PTSD, post-traumatic um, slave uh, disease or disorders. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. You, you notice the key word there? Don't bow down, not just physically, you understand? But don't bow down. Don't, don't, don't bow your God-given, you understand, heart and mind aligned with the testimony of Christ to them for, for their worldly, seclorum, material things. Nor serve them, nor serve them in that, in, in, in that same cause. For I, Yahweh, thy Elohim, am a zealous, it says jealous, but we've gone through this already, uh, jealous is a negative feminine spirit, while ze zeal, zealousness, with the Z, is a positive one, um, for I, the Lord thy God, am a zealous God, visiting the iniquity. Iniquity means rebellion. That means that they don't want to go Jah's way. And what we saw in this Baptist church, this Baptist church has gotten exposed for all the world to see. You know, um, we didn't see too much of it at the time, but, you know, we've been catching um, more and more portions of it. You know, it was kind of a long thing. I don't know if we're going to sit and watch the whole thing at one, at one gallop, but we saw different, you know, different parts of it. And we said, what, what kind of a funeral is this? You know, where did they get this from? You know what I mean? Is that, is that how you do it in the Baptist church? I can't wait till you, you come to the Church of Christ, you know, the Church of God in Christ. It's not the Church of God in the Baptist you know, for I, the Lord thy God, am a, a, a zealous God, visiting the iniquity, the rebellion of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy 
to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You know what's interesting? A lot of these false counterfeit and, and, and forsaking God. They're not really God forsaken, but they are forsaking God. You understand? And because they first are forsaking God, then they become God forsaken, of course. But it's because of their act and not some angry God. You know what I mean? John don't have to be angry. It says John laughs upon them because he, he sees their day is coming. You know what I'm saying? John's only sad for those, those poor lost sheep that get caught up in their sneer. You know, but John's able to make all things, you know, all things right and exact and, 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 and just. In, in his will, you understand? But this idea of keeping the commandments is not just Old Testament. We can go straight to, to John's epistle, where it says, says if one love God, they keep his commandment. You understand? So, so what's the difference? Christ said, I haven't come to, like, abolish the law, but I come to fulfill it. You, you know what I mean? So they're lying to you. I mean, I mean, on so many different levels, even the eating pork. You know, some of you all are maybe pork eaters. I hope not. You know, but some of the curious ones that might so-called have not stumbled but happened, happened on this video, you know, even those things violate the dietary laws. And why do you think you got so many Christians who are suffering the same diseases as the spiritual Egyptians as the spiritual, and the spiritual Sodomites? They're suffering the ver could they eat and live like a Gentile? You understand? They believe that they're a Gentile. You know, and their spiritual authorities have so hoodwinked, bamboozled, and distracted them from sound doctrine, from the sound doctrine. And as we said, once the so-called black churches turned away from the true identity of black people, which was a compromise with Massa, you know, not wanting to tell the black people who they are, the Ethiopian connection, the Israelite and the Hebrew root and truth, not wanting to tell them those things and not telling them only in little whispers here and there. You never really see a preacher preaching on that and showing the connection. Maybe, prayfully, some of them will get their acts right before it's too late. Because we all know when it's going to be too late. You understand? Know it may be too late after, before we do this video, finish this video. It may, it, it may be too late by the time we upload the video. You understand? Know and and maybe too late by the time you're seeing it. Who knows? But while there is time, you understand? Know We've got to redeem the time because the days are kufu. The days are evil. So death reigns from Adam to Moses, Right? Now, the first sin or the first missing of the mark, the first lack. Now, see, we're pointing out that word lack. Now, it's interesting because doubt and lack connects, right? Doubt, you see, if, if you know that there is a good God, and even though there are evil people and evil forces, the good God will, will, will work out your way as long as you commit your way to him in spirit and in truth. You're not going to really feel that you lack. You know, you're not going to suffer this uh, psychological uh, schizophrenia and, and schism. You know, and you're not going to you're not going to doubt God and trust the devil. And this is what happens. You know, and and John the Baptist is kind of an example of this right here. So the first sin it wrought the moral ruin of the race. The demonstration is simple. Death is universal. All die. Sinless infants, people who are moral, religious people, equally with the depraved. So we see the rich and the poor. We see wise men and fools dying. You understand? For a universal effect, there must be a universal cause. In other words, because even science now, worldly secular science, is beginning to, to recognize that the human being has the ability to regenerate, to renew, that even, even cells and organs in our bodies have the ability. In other words, but the ability to do it somehow has been cut off when they study the DNA. They recognize that it, 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 is, it is in the code, and it does it in a limited way, 
you know, like the skin cells flaking and, and other kind of things, you know, um, dead, dead skin, so forth and so on. But it doesn't do it fully. It's like it's working at a, a, at a, at a, depressed, at a depressed level. The mind state of people is a large part of that. You know, they say that DNA can do a lot of things that they find. They find that the DNA can change, you know, can get better, can get worse. And they're finding the connection with thought. When they get to the connection with true spirituality, you understand, then death will be fully abolished. You understand? But it, it's, it's not John that's doing it. It's man that continues to hear the message and to stick his fingers in his ear and to turn away and keep doing his thing until he, too, um, meets that fate. For a universal effect, there must be a universal cause. That cause is a state of universal chatiyat, a state of universal lack, missing the mark, missing the mark. But this universal state must have a cause it did. The consequence of Adam's, of Atum's, Adam's chatiyat sin was that the many were made sinners. In other words, you know, there's a law, and they still practice this. Even if you don't believe the Bible, you go in courts, they put your hand on the Bible, they have in God we trust. They must believe in it or derive power and authority from it. They say that... Um, was the, the, the many, the me, or oh, guilty by association, the many were made sinners. By the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Personal sins are not meant here. This is the, you know, this is the key thing. A lot of folks believe, oh, it's what you, you know, they're on this kind of personal level. Why? Because they're not dealing with the Holy Spirit. They're dealing with person. They're not dealing with God's word. They're not dealing with that spirit and that fire. You understand? They're not dealing with the real essence of things. Therefore, the, the, the result is evidence. Judge it by its, its fruit. By the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Personal sins are not meant here in this, in this context vis-a-vis -vis Adam. Remember, Adam is, is, a, is a parable. Adam himself is kind of a mystery, but it's a myth in the true sense of myth, not in the negative, derisive, um, Anglo-European 1700 um, 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 reconnotation of the word sense. From Adam to Moses, death reigned. Although there being no law, personal guilt was not imputed. Personal guilt was not imputed. Accordingly, from Genesis 4 and 7 to Exodus 29 and 14, the sin offering is not once mentioned. And this is interesting because actually when you go to ancient Egypt, where Moses was learned in the wisdom of Egypt, they also didn't have any sin offering. Remember the 42 negative confessions? It says, I have not done this, I have not done that. And I've always asked the question, suppose you really did do it. Do you still appear before the God and the gods and say, I have not done that? So you're fooling the gods? Uh, don't like that kind of system right there. Something is, you know, I don't want, I don't want a, a God that can't be fooled in that sense. You know, then since physical death from Adam to Moses was not due to the sinful acts of those who died. So look at that. See, a lot of times we think when people die or something happens, something bad happens to somebody, it's because they brought it on themselves. And then they'll go in the Bible and start rah, 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 and don't recognize there's a bigger picture here. You understand? You know, um, judge those things, you understand, that you can in balance. And other things, other judgment, we don't have all the evidence. Leave that judgment in the sense of all judgment to God. Some things you must judge for yourself. You understand? So don't get confused. People got to twist it. You understand? Like we're not supposed to judge anything. You understand? So then when you go outside, you don't, don't, don't judge what you're going to wear. How does this look? This look good. Oh, okay. 
you know, how does it look? It don't look good. It don't look good? Oh, you're right. It don't look good. Didn't you just make a judgment there? What you want to eat? Oh, uh, let me think. I would have that. No, I'll have that. Didn't you make a judgment there? Oh, uh, I don't like to wear pink. Aren't you making a judgment there? So, you, you know what I mean? That's, that's where the context. See, God, Jah, is in the details. You know what I'm saying? I used to say devil's in the detail. I began to think about that. I said, what kind of crap is that? You know what I'm saying? The devil want to keep you from the details. It follows that it is due to a universal sinful state or nature. Something has gotten corrupted in our nature, in our spiritual nature, in our psychological nature, which has, has, has condensed, you understand, slowed to the rate of atmosphere and vibration and affects our physical, our carbon, organic structures, thus bringing on what, what mortals call death. And that state is declared to be our inheritance from Adam. The moral state of fallen man is described in Scripture. Now, there's, a, there's many verses here, not to go through all of it right here, but those who have a Schofield Study Bible, once again, we encourage you, spend some time on it, maybe take a couple of days and, and study it and see the, the link between the Scriptures and the verses and the sense therein. Broadly, the contrast is this. Adam... Sin, death. Christ, righteousness, life. Adam drew down into his ruin the old creation. Adam drew down to his ruin the old creation, Romans 8, 19 to 22, of which he was Lord. He was Lord. Adam was Lord and head. Adam, Adam, Atum, was the a ten Adam was the Adon, right? And he was the Ras. He was the Ris. Or in um, bad Hebrew, he was the Rosh, right? The Moshia, or Christ, Christos, he brings into moral unity with God. You see, people say, oh, Moses stole the Ten Commandments out of Egypt. And for some of y'all, that makes a lot of sense because, you know, it says this here, it says, but you never look at the context. One is saying, I have not done all these things, right? What if you did do it? So you mean, even if I do it, I should still say I didn't do it. What is that doing? That is ignorance. That is lying. That is deception. But who ultimately are you deceiving? You're ultimately deceiving yourself. Moses understood that and thereby ended the reign of, of death. You understand? The reign of death. This is why he was pictured and seen with Yeshua on the Mount of Transfiguration with another extraterrestrial, you understand? Another extraterrestrial heavenly brother named Elias or Eliyahu, known as Elijah. Just like Hey, Noke, you know what I'm saying, was translated. He was translated. He wasn't lost in translation. See, death really, in a sense, it, it becomes a loss in translation, in a sense. It means that all the code that was not converted. All the code did not get converted. You see, even today there are ones and ones on the face of the earth that don't go in the way that most people go, you know, the physical death. There are. There are those examples. People say, well, where are they? I've got to see them. Breathe the ear. You understand? Do you see the ear? You see, so that's another doubt. People have a doubt. They have to see it. You know, cause it cause for them, seeing is believing. You understand? Um, we walk by faith and not by sight because faith itself becomes a higher sight. It becomes a spiritual sight. I like to liken it to um, the Matrix, Neo, the new man, the ID soul in the Matrix movie in the Mahatan movie, when Neo was able to look and see the code, see the writing on the wall. He basically saw that the wall was made of writing. You understand? That, that, that the wall was made of the word of God, that truly everything around us, because the things that we see were made of that which we don't see. You understand? But we'll hopefully touch on that. But Christ, he brings into moral unity with God. He, he brings us into moral unity with the true God because he has us look at ourselves. 
You understand? Look at ourselves and has his perfect example as our template. And he gives us the grace now to work out our salvation, that opportunity, grace is that opportunity that we have to work out our salvation, not to walk around with a little bit of sprinkling of water, you understand, like in the Whitney Houston clip when she went to Israel, when she went to Israel and the, and the African Hebrew community baptized her. And there's some footage that we saw recently, um, even the context of it was, was John Stewart's uh, Daily Show, and, and that was the Jebu Jews mocking the black Jews thing that we touched on already. But um, when you watch the video itself, when her and Bobby hug and embrace and she comes out the water, you can the spiritual amongst you, those who have, have some spiritual sight, more or less, can see it. You, you, you can see it. The blind, if there's ones that say, I don't see it, well, those are the blind and um, they, 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 they need to have that blindness, you know, that blindness uh, sent back to the devil. Because the devil is blind. Satan is blind. Not physically, but spiritually. Otherwise, they and them wouldn't, wouldn't do what they're doing. Because their fate is already sealed up. You understand? And I think the only gain is when the devil already knowing that his fate is, is sealed, is how many of us who have the potential for eternal life would turn away from that and follow him for nothing, for nothingness, for, for garbage. You know, like what it says about Moses, how Moses, um, he turned away from being Pharaoh's daughter, from being, I mean, from, from being Pharaoh's daughter's um, son. He, he turned away from that, being Hatshepsut's son. He could have been king of Egypt. He could have been the next ruler. He could have been big bulk, yeah. You know what I'm saying? In Egypt. You know what I'm saying? But he turned away from, in other words, his future was like, say, in politics. He could have been the president. He, he could have been more than the president in that sense. He could have been a king. You know, the next monarch. He's like, he like the Duke of Gloucester who said, I cannot sit on the English throne because I have seen, I have seen Christ in his kingly character. He saw Christ, the return of Christ in spirit and in truth. And he knew that if he were to, to sit on the throne of England, he would have had to agree to the oath that says, I sit on this throne until Christ come. Well, how could he do that when he already saw the line of the tribe of Judah in the biblical land of, of Cush, of Ethiopia? You understand the 225th you know, the elect of God. How could he do that? So in a, not a similar way, but as far as turning away from that great, that, that great temporal dignity and nobility, that's what he did. But that, that's very hard for a lot of people who suffer Satan's lacking syndrome. They, because they have the lacking syndrome, they turn lackeys for Satan. You know, they turn lackeys for the devil. You know, because they think that they're lacking something. So they can be hoodwinked and bamboozled. You know what I'm saying? Those people can be easily deceived. It's like, you know, when someone tells their children, you'll never be nothing, you ain't nothing, and then you wonder why this child grows up to have a demon. You know, and, and to do all sort of ungodly wicked, wickedness. And you're telling them that's not right and, and the child is saying, by what authority? By your authority? And you say, don't disrespect me. I'm your parent. You understand? But did you ever teach them the law, the commandment? You told them that, hey, we baptized you in the Baptist church by grace. You understand? Well, I guess they fell. they fallen from grace. You understand? And that which happened to the devil, in a sense, has happened to, to them because the saints are now, because they're open, throw on them his nature, and they assume his nature. So it is possible to say, theologically speaking, that one hath a devil, and by extension that they are a devil, but not in the sense that they are the devil. There's a, there's a big, there's an extremely big, 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 big difference between the two. So it's Christ now that brings us into that moral unity with God and into eternal life. 
the new creation of which he is Lord and head, of which he is Adon, Aton, Aten, and the Ras, the Farai. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. Even the animal and material creation was cursed for man's sake. Now, people, people, I know we've gone long in this particular vid right here, but don't you see that going on? Don't you see exactly that the animal, the animal, how the animals are suffering? I mean, they, they don't even have no environment to even be themselves. So now we see, you, you know, we see animals and, 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 and the creature suffering. You know what I mean? The creature suffering, um, oh, my God. I mean, come on. Like, and what's so interesting is that though we see these things, Many will just go about their business, oh, devil's business, you understand, being busy, being under Satan's yoke, you know, they will continue being under Satan's yoke, saying they're busy, 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 doing the devil's busy, the business at the devil's will, so forth and so on, and their heart, their consciences become seared, like with a, with a hot iron. When they see what's going on with the animals, the creation, you know, they feel nothing. When they see the material world being polluted, you understand, as it's being polluted under this, under this alien um, 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 domination, this satanic, this satanic men and angels and, and this collusion of unclean, foul, and unholy spirits, it doesn't move them. It doesn't bother them. They're like, hey, you know, whatever. I got to just go make my, you know, make those papers. Mm-hmm. You know, those papers will burn fast.